When the Washington Capitals traded for Pierre-Luc Dubois at the start of the offseason, they were rightly clowned by just about everybody on the internet, including myself, for what was seen as taking on perhaps the worst contract in the NHL. Even though they are a team who is desperate for some scoring help and especially some stability in the top six center position, acquiring a guy like Pierre-Luc Dubois who has bounced around from team to team over the last few years, and even though he just turned 26, has topped out at 28 goals and 60 points in his best seasons. After last season, his first in LA where he had 40 points in 82 games and was relegated to third line duty, but just didn't produce enough given the contract extension he signed with LA and was shipped off to the Cap in a swap of bad contracts sending Darcy Kemper back to LA. It was a trade that raised a lot of eyebrows as a reputation was going around that Pierre-Luc Dubois was a cancer, or for those who were being a bit more generous, that his passion and commitment to hockey wasn't quite where it should be. But today, Elliot Friedman dropped an interesting little nugget on the 32 Thoughts podcast with regards to Pierre-Luc Dubois and how he might perform in Washington, specifically the influence that Capitals head coach Spencer Carberry could have on Dubois. Friedman talked about how Dubois is basically on his last chance in Washington, given that he has been moved around by about an eighth of the NHL teams, and even knows that LA Kings GM and former player Rob Blake once went on onto the ice in full gear, talking to Pierre-Luc Dubois about his need to battle harder, obviously sending a message to Dubois that his effort level needs to be higher. But then, interestingly, he contrasts that with a story about Spencer Carberry talking at the end of the year with Rasmus Sandin about the state of his his play last year, and Sandin was very up and down in 2023-24, so Carberry actually did something interesting, which is rather than having this discussion right after the season in like the locker room takedown day, he told Sandin to wait a couple of weeks and then reconnected with him, and Sandin said that he took that time and he felt like he could be more honest about his own flaws, and they had a very productive conversation about what he wasn't doing well last year and how they could make that better in 2024-25. And Friedman says that Sandin really appreciated the way that Carberry handled it, and I think that Friedman is trying to highlight a bit of a difference between the way that Carver handles his players, where I would say he's much more of an emotionally intelligent coach than maybe previous guys that Dubois has played for, like Rob Blake, like John Tortorella in Columbus, like Rick Bonus. These are old school guys who are probably going to be a little bit harder on players, especially younger players who they don't perceive as giving the highest amount of energy and effort, which may not be as effective in today's NHL, especially with the younger players who are a little bit more, I don't want to say like sensitive or sheltered, you know, they've grown up with social media, they're a little bit more aware of how they're perceived by the public, and fans have more ways to access them and tell them how they feel. So if a player like that is being put under a microscope and getting a lot of pressure, they might not necessarily respond to that the way that an old school coach like a Tortorella or a Bonus is expecting them to. And maybe the approach of a guy like Carberry, who is a little bit more intuitive psychologically about his players, will be able to get more out of Pierre-Luc Dubois than other coaches have in the past. I have no way of knowing, and as Friedman says, this is probably Pierre Luc Dubois' last chance, so that puts an added level of pressure on him. Pierre Luc Dubois is in a position to succeed. He's going to get to center Alex Ovechkin. This is his best opportunity to put up gaudy points. He's financially secure. He's not playing for another contract, and honestly, he's on a team that's not really expecting him to be the star. So it'll be interesting to see how he responds and how Spencer Carberry is able to coach him to get the most out of that talent.